one week out and bookies have never been so confident in a Trump win. Whilst the polls are too close to call, the betting odds tell a very different story. Trump's odds are four to seven, that's a 62% chance of winning, while Harris's are seven to four, a 36% chance. So, Aisha, how does that make you feel at this point? I'm feeling really anxious about this election. I actually think Trump is going to win. I mean, I have nothing scientific. It's just what my gut tells me. Mm -hmm. And that's how what my gut told me back in 2016. That's what my gut told me about Brexit as well. So my gut can be quite reliable. Um, <laughs> but I hope my gut is wrong because I think it will be very, very difficult for um, America. I think it will be really difficult for the whole world um, uh, as well. Somebody said to me, in fact, it was Geoffrey Archer mm -hmm. who said to me the other day, he's not a, a wet liberal by any stretch of the imagination, but there's many people like him who are saying that they think if he comes back in again, he's going to be very vengeful and want mm -hmm. to kind of do quite a lot to damage democracy, maybe to stay in for another sort of as long as, long as he can. So I'm very, very worried. OK, I'm going to get to Carolyn in just one second, but because you were so full of horror at the prospect of a Trump victory, I'd like to know why you think it is that it's likely that he will yet again succeed. What do the Americans see in him that you don't? So I think that there's a huge feeling of anti-politics and anti-establishment. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are turning towards him. I've been just glued to the coverage. For example, there's a lot of people of colour. There's even, you know, reports that Muslim people, you know, immigrant communities. And I think part of that is that they quite like the fact that he doesn't kind of play by the rules of normal politics. They quite like the strong man stuff. And they feel quite disillusioned by mainstream traditional politics. I think what he offers is something different and a bit fun, um, but I don't think it will get results and I think it will be quite and dangerous. And Carol, you're not filled with dread at the prospect of a Trump victory. Um, no, I mean, no, I'm not. I'd be more filled with dread if she got in because I actually do think uh, she is not the right person uh, to be the president. Why? And, uh, Why? And because I just think she's not very bright. She had, she had, you know, four years as vice president and did absolutely nothing. She was tasked with one job, which was immigration, and failed miserably on that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been obvious throughout the whole campaign, I think, that they've kept her here hidden and kept her down because they're terrified of what she might do and say, because she isn't that bright on her feet. Uh, I think that the, the stench of desperation uh, among the, the Democrats at the moment is terrifying in that, you know, there was, there was that big concert yesterday with Springsteen out and all the great big celebs and, and it was a Beyonce was out. Mm. Um, and, and then I'm watching the Obamas who are saying that she's the best thing since sliced bread. They wouldn't endorse her in the beginning because they thought she was so bad and then when they realised there was no choice they had to. So I don't believe a single word they say. I'm watching them, the hypocrisy makes me feel ill. So but so I think, yeah, I think Trump is going to win and I think Aisha's right. I think people... What I like about him, um, I don't like lots about him, but what I do like about him is the fact that other countries are scared of what he may do. And I think that's not a, ter that's not a terrible thing. But are you scared, as Ayesha says, that he may come back a vengeful uh, version of his normal I, self, which is pretty vengeful anyway? I, no, I, no, I'm not. But what I am scared of is what he might look to in Britain, but thanks to, to our current Labour government, who has absolutely paid him off with, you know, he's, he's trying to sue us for, you know, electoral interference. Um, and, you know, somebody in his camp said the other day, it was his son, in fact. Yes. Ha, look at he, the state of the UK. Yeah, we all heard he, him say he, it. If he gets in, he's not going to be very chuffed. Well, well, it's just crazy. I it's mean, somebody's... speaking of Trump, people have been cringing at this particular moment between Donald, the Donald, and his wife, Melania, during a rally at Madison Square Garden just a few days ago. So what's going on here, effectively, is an a sort awkward of kiss that one. to kiss. Well, I mean, <laughs> and we all remember, don't we, the, the, the well, Charles and Diana kiss where mm. it didn't connect and the whole thing was well, left. We all, the thing about Melania, I mean, the meme about Melania, it was like blink twice, you know, blink twi it's twice for help sort of thing. I mean, she literally, she's like mm, around him. And, but, you know, I think it's really interesting. He's got such a... His reputation with women is so appalling and we know that he's been convicted of serious sexual assault uh, and rape uh, and terrible things like that. We know even actually Melania has come and spoken about reproductive rights. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of women in America really worried about what lies uh, ahead for them. And I just think, the you know, in a way, it's funny looking at the body language between them, but I don't really 
care. She's made her choice to be with him. But I think women across America particularly will feel really anxious about what lies ahead. And Carol, a woman in America who decides to vote for Trump, what's going through her head or what's no, think... not going through? What is she kind of erasing from her memory as she places a vote for Trump in this election? I, I think that's kind of intellectualising it too much in that sense. I think the people who are going to vote for him um, are the people who are disillusioned with what's been happening over the past four years in America. You know, they've had a guy running the country um, who, you know, was not always there. Uh, they had Kamala, who was never there. Um, and, and I think they just want, uh, they want something different. And, and you know, I... <sighs> I actually mentioned before that, you know, there's lots of people of colour who are on his side this time round. They weren't last time round. They are now, which is interesting. And a lot of people who, who think America first, they're on his side. And if you're a woman and you think America first, you're going to be on his side. OK, so I'm going to be asking Carol in just a second, would she wear a MAGA hat? And this is why, because in the sun, although she's a bit stylish, maybe too stylish to What's consider... What's a MAGA hat? And it would Make ruin America her hair. It would ruin her hair. Oh, oh, so that's... this is a story in the sun about a MAGA hat war which halted a BA flight. It was around that erupted between two American women. One refused to remove her Make America Great Again hat. Carol, A, would you wear one? No. B, would you take it off if it offended somebody sitting next to you? Uh, no, I would actually be... Uh, no matter what kind of hat I was wearing, <laughs> if somebody said, take out that hat off, it's offending me, I wouldn't do it. Just for spite, I wouldn't do it. But Carol would uh, headbutt them. I, no, well, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> She'd give them I, a Glasgow but, kiss. But I would not take it off, because that would really annoy me. But, I mean, if someone was trying to impose their politics on me, that my politics were offending them, I wouldn't tell them to, to go to you nowhere. Good. So, on no. a plane, where you're stuck with them for the whole of the rest yeah. of the journey? Yeah, oh, particularly on a plane, yeah. I mean, with beautiful British good manners. How dare they? I'm, I'm very well mannered and so, until someone isn't to me, and then I'm not. And is it bad manners, Ayesha, to ask somebody to take off a hat with a political slogan because well, you don't like I think it? it? I think the reality is if somebody has gone to the trouble to put their MAGA hat on, they're doing it as a <laughs> like fashion statement, they're really proud of wearing their politics. So probably if you ask them to take them off, they you're going to get Carol's reaction, yes, you're you going to get your head butt. OK, so, so I mean, I, no, I, would, I, I don't go around headbutting people. A, I probably, probably wouldn't dare to ask someone to take the hat off. And B, if someone did ask me, I'd probably say, oh, sorry. Would you? Probably, because I just think, oh, gosh, I'm the last thing I but want is I, a bust up on a plane. So what with your woman? How dare they? I, what happens if somebody said, oh, uh, people have got to see Vanessa's boots here. Yeah. Vanessa, yeah. get your boots up on the table. My boots? Yeah, these are just... Look at those oh, boots! Wow. These are things. Look, look at, at that thing. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Now, okay, somebody, I wouldn't take my boots off if they so, were offending so anybody, let me tell you. So if someone said you they're offending me, take them off, you um, wouldn't, would No, you? I would not. There I said, my best boots, leave <laughs> them alone. You, you take them to the cab, Vanessa. Exactly. All right.